guys. So, school for me just started around close to two weeks ago. And there are some pros to DLD, but a lot of them are just bad. Like, digital learning was okay when we were finishing off last school year because we had time to have interactions with our teachers. We had made our friends. We had known what was to expect in that class. But now we're starting a new school year completely online. And we didn't get that proper closure we had last school year. And a lot of kids are just adjusting, heading to new schools with all this rapid, rapid, rapid stuff. And teachers aren't explaining stuff properly. I honestly think that digital learning is just giving teachers leverage to do the bare minimum and they'll get and they'll still get paid for it which is just a shame so in this video i'm just gonna be breaking down my stance on digital learning what are some good things about it and what are which is the majority cons of digital learning so i wrote down some points here and without further ado, let me just get into them. So first off, you have waking up a bit later. You don't have to wake up um, over an hour early just to go catch the bus or for your parents to give you a ride. Or maybe if you're old enough, to just drive to school. If you would normally wake up at 4.35 o'clock to go start school at 7, you can wake up around 6.45, 6.50. But if you have parents like mine, they'll still wake you up an hour early because their judgment on you getting ready, on you taking like about an hour to get ready for school, they'll use that to still let you have less sleep so then another pro was if your teacher was cool if they just had gone over what you were supposed to do for that day they'll say okay guys if you're done you can log off have a great day but some teachers that even though their class is scheduled for between 75 and 90 minutes. They will just be talking, 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 talking until they reach the end of their class period, which is just completely ridiculous. So another point I have here is that you can work from anywhere in your house. You can work from your bedroom, a desk, your dining area, and your living room area because it doesn't matter where you're learning. It just matters that you're actually learning. And then one thing I like that they added was they have breaks. So once you're finished with your first class, you have 10 minutes before you have to log into your next class. But with in-person is they give you a break, but you have to use that break getting to class. You can't talk to your friends. You can't go use the bathroom. No. You have to use all that energy walking to the other side of the school. And they only give you about five minutes. That's completely ridiculous. Now, let's get into the course. So, one thing I have here is below average teaching. As I said earlier, digital learning, it could be an excuse for teachers to do the bare minimum of teaching. When it came to in-person school, you would have the whiteboards, you would have the technologies, you would have classmates to communicate with, and you would have activities to test your knowledge on what you learned that day. So the teacher would bring up the lesson, they would explain it step by step, and then you'd have an activity to collaborate with your classmates on. 
But with digital learning, a lot of the time it's just Google Slides. And what they're doing in my biology class is doing the bare minimum. Yes, yes, they're recording the lesson, but what is there to record? All they're doing in biology is they put up a Google Slides PowerPoint and they just read bullet by bullet. They read, they read the point and they don't even explain before they go to the next point. They'll just pull up some random picture. They won't explain anything, but they try too hard to make it like a regular classroom. And they'll start calling students as if their teaching was so good when all you did was read. This isn't story time and language arts, sir. I need you to explain the topic. I need you to explain the topic. Because if you call on anybody, all they're gonna do is say, um, 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 uh, 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 uh. And even if they call on someone else, we don't know. If you just read something and don't explain it, we will not know. Which leads me into my next point. Grades. When it comes to the teachers doing the bare minimum by reading a Google Slides, all of a sudden, they'll just pull some random questions out of the air. They'll read you a basic bullet point on, okay, cells are this. Okay, what cells make what cells make up this food? What cells make up this vegetable? Oh, what type of molecule is this? What type of molecule is that? And I'm just like, we didn't learn this in the Google Slides. What learn? They say, oh, you learned this in class. Oh, you mean read? <laughs> the stuff you read? And didn't explain the stuff you read? Because you sure didn't record, you rec you're recording, but you sure can't see yourself on camera explaining anything. Next up, you have lack of social skills and communicating. As I said, we're already two weeks into the school year, and at this time, you would be making some friendships by now. But on the Zoom call, you're just staring at a bunch of kids. You can't get anybody's Snapchat or Instagram to communicate with them. You can't go up to them in class and go ask them for help. You're just there, sitting there clueless. And if you don't understand anything, oh well. Because when it comes to emailing these teachers, we shouldn't have to be emailing them this early. They should just teach the lesson, we do our activity, and go on about our day. But when it comes to responding to any of our questions, they take two days to a week to respond. And when they actually do respond, it's the most unhelpful answer. You could literally type a whole paragraph. And they will just give you one or two words. Okay, it's this. What don't you understand? And you'll tell them. Oh, okay, we learned this, and this is so-and-so-and-so. Okay, you get it? No. Teaching isn't just talk. Teaching isn't just reading. You tell somebody something, and you explain it, and then finally, you comprehend. Next up, you have too much work. I know the teachers will be like, Oh, we know this is a hard time for you guys, but don't forget you have a quiz at the end of the week. Don't forget you have three pages of homework. Don't forget, get on this website and do the six assignments I put on there. Oh, don't forget, make sure to answer these questions that are in the Google Slides presentation. <laughs> don't understand you know it's a hard time so why are you giving us more work more work online than we do in actual school 
because then the teachers will be like, oh, I have so much work to grade. I have so much work to grade. I have all this work. And on top of that, you have more and more work. Then why do you assign that much work? They'll be so enthusiastic when it comes to assigning those works. But when it comes to grading them, all of a sudden, they have a problem. Next up is you have policing. These teachers will police you to have your camera on. They'll police you to sit up straight. They'll police you on where you're supposed to be doing your work, how you're supposed to be doing your work, what you're wearing. <laughs> what you're wearing. We are not in in-person school. So if I'm eating, if I'm wearing my bonnet, if I am lying on my bed, oh, I'm sorry, you can't do that. School says this. When did school become my house? As they said in that TikTok, oh, why are you eating? How is this affecting you? How is me lying down, eating? or not having my camera on affecting you. I was in biology class today and literally my teacher was like, I'm getting a bit too tired of asking high schoolers to turn on their camera. How is me not turning on my camera affecting you? It's not like your lesson is good anyway, just reading off of a PowerPoint. How is this affecting you? Oh, school says you, school says you have to be at a desk. School says you have to be sitting up. You can't do this in bed. It's not my house. School says you can't wear this. That's school. My house is not the school address. My house is my house. I want to wear at my house. I will wear at my house. And then you also have a good way to bond with somebody is we don't just start off liking, um, not liking the teacher. They have to do something. And most of the time, when it comes to your teacher doing anything wrongly, that's something you can bond with your friends with. But when it comes to your teacher just teaching poorly, you can't talk with anyone about how bad they're teaching, which is completely ridiculous. That's something we... That's something we can bond over as students. Our teacher's not doing the proper job when it comes to teaching. But now you're just staring at faces, keeping it to yourself, wishing you could talk to somebody about it. And then you also have... Oi, I have some respect that they're talking about. Oh, you're... I wish. I wish they would be like, oh, you're in school? Oh, you're in school? Okay, okay. But they will be talking loudly, kicking on the phone, watching TV at the highest volume, screaming, screaming, doing all this extra stuff, walking around. Like, bro, I'm in class. Why are you doing why are you doing all this? It's completely ridiculous. And lastly, we don't have time. We don't have time for all these Zoom bombers. We shouldn't have to we shouldn't have to be punished based on what some random people do. Like I just want like I just want to log in and get out. I don't need I don't need you guys yelling about what I'm not doing at the Zoom. At the end of the day, it's my house. It's my house. Always we're just trying to learn. We're losing so much in this pandemic and all they care about is us having, um, us not having our camera on. How about actually teaching a good lesson? How about helping us pass this class? But no, they're too worried about what the school says. So anyways, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And the next video will be the first episode of my new series, Growing Up African, where I talk about life growing up as an African child. 
make sure you follow me on my social medias in the outro and i will see you guys next time bye <laughs>